I have reason to believe that solar panels are stealing the sun's soul. Don't argue with me unless you have proof that they are not stealing the sun's soul. All right, so <clears throat> the other day, Billy Feaster and Sharon Feaster's guys at Be Fast Drive Long put all the sheetrock up. And then one guy came and tape embedded everything and they had to wait for it to dry. And then he came back today and tape embedded it all again. So let's take a quick look around. Look at this. I don't know if you remember, this was the order house, okay? This house, this was all, the roof was caved in. There was so much stuff you couldn't open the door. We couldn't open this door or this door over here. And then this was just chest deep in junk. Come on around. <clears throat> this, this room, remember, had natural skylights. Everything was falling through. This was all moldy. We had to replace all this floor. We did all new plumbing. We did all new wiring. We did a new breaker box. Uh, we did a new roof. We did new siding, new windows, new doors, everything. But now, oh, what a difference. All right, let's keep looking. And then, remember this room. Thank you, sir. Here's the man. Look at him. There's a man. This guy is strong <laughs> and smart. <laughs> you know See you later. Thank you. Lighter. Uh, this was the kitchen. Remember, the, it had the newly renovated within the last century or so kitchen. And just junk literally everywhere. And now, oh, I can't wait. Because once they texture tomorrow or soon, then we'll get to paint everything. And then we put in cabinets and we put in flooring and we put in trim. And mm, oh, I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. Oh, hey there. So, We've got BFAS drywall here, and they just, yesterday they finished doing all the um, table bed, and today what'd you do? Prime the house. Prime the house. Now what does that mean to people who don't understand it? When you prime the house, you're making everything blend in mm -hmm. and making it more solid. So that then what happened? So when the sun hits it, it looks like one solid wall. So you guys perform magic on the house? Sometimes. I would say magic. Okay, so when you're watching TV and you don't like the TV show, do you just keep watching? What do you do? You just turn my video game on. Or? Or change the channel. Change the channel. So in your life, right, if you're like, I keep noticing the same bad patterns, I don't like it, I'm miserable, boo-hoo, wah, wah, wah. Have you ever thought about changing the channel? Or maybe playing some video games? I'm just saying, Maybe the common denominator is you keep doing the same stuff that gets the same results. Am I wrong? You're right. Right. We're right. So that's what's going to happen. You guys are going to be like this. My life has been not great so far. I keep doing the same dumb thing. I'm going to change the channel. I'm going to do something different. And then you'll be like this. John, thank you so much because now my life's better. You're welcome. Oh, hey there. So today we have gotten all of our pre-work done and we've caulked and prepped for paint. And now we're about to paint it. So right now, you look at it, you go, hmm, I don't, I don't like it. It's not, it's pretty ugly. But later on, you'll be like, now that's beautiful. And that's because we've done this before. We know what we're doing. So I have not made as many videos recently. And as a lot of you guys know, it's because, um, among other things, I'm busy. I mean, I work too much. <laughs> that's part of it. And also because um, my dad is, in hospice and he's dying right now and it's it's rough so uh i haven't been like as funny because in my heart i'm like i'm dealing with a lot of stuff um and <clears throat> a lot of people assume that because i'm a christian that my dad is also a christian that is not true in fact the last time i saw him he said i think that you're trying to get me into your christian heaven i don't want anything to do with your christian god or your christian heaven i'm going to my own heaven please stop trying to talk to me about this so that is uh, heavy on my heart right now. I keep praying that God will reveal himself in an undeniable way. Um, and lots and lots of people are praying. I really appreciate it. But that's why I haven't been like as funny because uh, that's hard heavy news. All right, love you guys. Have you. Okay, one. Okay, there. So today we got all the inside of the second house painted. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we got cabinets up and the microwave up. Now, obviously, appliances are not in yet. Granite's not done yet. There's not a sink and things like that, but tremendous difference. Also, they got all the texture done next door, and then Alan cut down all kinds of brush. A, a group of people that I know, um, their children are grown, and they were all like trying to unintentionally micromanage their children's lives. I think they should do this, and they're not doing this. I needed to steer them in the right direction. They meant well, okay? And one person, said, you know what, uh, God told me 
your parenting days are over. Your kids are grown. You're past the age. Stop parenting your children. Be there for them. Love them. If they ask for something, give it to them. But don't try to control every little thing in their life. They're grown. Let them go. Also, she said, I won't say anything bad about any of their spouses. I won't say anything bad about their spouse or even have a bad conversation about their spouse to my child or vice versa. And she said, I told my in-laws, my children-in-law this early on. And I said, your name is safe in my mouth. And I thought, that is good. That is good stuff. Your name is safe in my mouth. No matter what gets said about you, I will not contribute bad things to being said about you. I think more people need to do that. All right, we're gonna go home and do other stuff. Oh, hey there. So, today we've had a busy morning and then I, you know, haven't been making videos. But um, I did sell a house this morning, so yay. And we also take all this off and painted two coats, so that's great. Alan did, all, I mean, my electrician did all the wiring next door and that was amazing and he's done tremendous with it. Uh, we're about to hang cabinets in here, we'll show you that in a second, but we got all the paint up and right now, you probably can't tell because of lighting and things like that, but you know, it looks way better. But once we get the white and the floor and everything in here, you'd be like, that looks pretty. The neighbors just came by and they looked at everything and they're like, this looks so much better. They used the words 500% better and I'm like, you don't understand percentages very well, do you? But you know, there's no point in being precise if you don't know what you're talking about, so. Oh, hey there. So, we showed you that we painted in here, but we're also about to hang cabinets. Now, I know I've showed you this before, but look, I've got a lot of episodes, and so if you don't watch all of them, you'd be like, I've never seen this. So it's easier to change your audience than it is to change your content. Now, what we do when we hang cabinets, you see we've got a blue line right there? We're gonna hang our upper cabinets first. You know why? Because it's a lot easier to hang like this than it is to hang like this. It's very uncomfortable. And Alan, he doesn't like it. He, he, complains a lot and he does this and then tears come out splash 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 out of his eyes and i'm like poor alan and i gotta like give him a binky it's like a pacifier and i like burp him and stuff like that <laughs> he loves it he loves it so what we're gonna do now we got the blue line there that's where the bottom of the tub the upper canvas goes <laughs> you can hear him crying right now uh, and we're gonna mark where all the studs are and we're gonna test where all the studs are by putting screws in there and making sure because the house over there next door was a nightmare. It was like 36 inch centers or something like that. It wasn't. It had a lot of imaginary stuff. Yeah, they were, they were like, I think one should go here maybe. And I'm like, there should. And it was like, hole, 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 hole. Like, there should be a stud here. And there wasn't. Actually, two. <laughs> yeah, there should be a couple. Now, we're exaggerating a little bit, but still. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to start in the corner, and then we're going to work our way out, and then we're going to hang our hood vent microwave. And then we're gonna start in the corner over there with Lazy Susan and do the bottom. So we'll show you every step of the way. All right, bye. Oh, hey there. So we got the upper cabinets in. You can take a quick look. They're amazing. If you look inside, they have adjustable shelves. That's amazing. You just move the pegs. Now, we put in this microwave. Also amazing, all right? We could stop there. A lot of people do. And they leave this protective coating on there and then they wonder like, why does my microwave look underwhelming? Well, here's why. You forgot to take the stuff off. So watch this. Here, it doesn't look so bad, right? You look at that, you go, ah, but what's this weird edge? It's not very fine. Don't worry. We'll just take this off and like magic. You see how that looked rough before? Oh, this is gonna be amazing. Oh. I'm oh. amazed. All appliances have that? Yeah. You're not protecting anything by leaving it on there. That's for packaging only. Now, actually it ruins it. it stay, it'll stay in the stainless steel. What Alan said. Now, look. A lot of times you want to pick one of these things up and they're heavy, right? And you gotta uh, move it all in there. But if you take the packaging film off, it takes a lot of the weight out, <laughs> which really helps. And then you don't have to like, you don't, it's not as much of a strain, you don't get a hernia. So, hope that helps. Oh, hey there. It's been about 28 moments. Uh, this is actually very quick. You guys could all do your own cabinets, but you hire me and thank you. Uh, I was gonna take a nap, but now I'm not going to like a 48 second nap. So as you can see, we did the upper cabinets first, then we put in the microwave above the stove microwave, and then we put in the lower cabinets. Now we're gonna have a stove here and dishwasher there and a fridge over here. And then you know what's gonna happen? It'll be a kitchen. And then over there, there'll be a sink. So sink, dishwasher, stove, microwave, fridge. Okay, now maybe you guys are like John. 
I'm carrying a heavy burden right now. You don't understand. It's a lot. Emotionally, physically, it's too much. It's too much for me. I can't handle it all. I understand. But Jesus can lift that heavy burden off of you. Um, he actually said, Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, because I will give you rest. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I will help you and I will make it easy. I'm going to Japan here in a couple months for a mission trip. And uh, the guy that's leading it, Steve Hedlund, is an amazing person. Okay, um, And he, we were having a meeting and he goes, for those of you that can't afford to go, he goes, I don't know. Just give your life completely to Jesus and he'll provide a way. And I was like, you're right. You were 100% right. Everybody's like, oh, let me find some complicated way. And he just very simply just looked and goes, just give your life completely to Jesus. He'll find a way for you. And I'm like, yeah, he will. He owns all the mountains on all the all the planes, all everything, the whole planet. It, it's all his. And for him to come up with whatever your problem is, and when you think about it in the vast expanse of you know the universe and eternity, you're like, so really, what I'm asking for is a billion dollars. He's like, a billion dollars? Here you go. No problem. Because he made the whole universe. Whatever your thing is that you've been struggling your whole life with, have you taken it to Jesus? Because you might be like, wow, that was so much easier than I thought. Why did I hold on to that for so long? You know, we've made videos before where um, we equate holding a grudge to holding a big bucket of water. And I remember I had Steve Lux, who's a good friend of mine, and I had two big heavy buckets of water. I'm like, hey, could you mind holding this grudge for me? Because it's really heavy. He goes, man, I got a trailer full of grudges right now. I can take four or five, maybe six, but that's it. I don't have room for any more of that. And I'm like, I know that's how it really is though. You're, you're carrying all this weight and you're like, put it down, let it go, be done with that. Like have a light heart. Don't be carrying all that stuff inside of you. Take it to Jesus, put it at the foot of the cross. He's fix way bigger problems than yours. You know, when people in show business, um, we've been on shows a lot and a general saying is, man, I've screwed up way bigger shows than this. Like you think your problem is big, I've screwed up way bigger stuff than this. But Jesus has fixed way bigger problems than what you've got. No matter what you think, like, but you don't understand Jesus. He's like, do I not? I assure you I do. Give him a chance, seriously. Like time's running out. The sand is falling out of the hourglass. There's not as much left as you might think. Get your life right with Jesus, for real. Love you guys. Hey there. So today, we are going to finally get lights on in here. Now they're not on yet. You can see they're still where the outlets are and switches are. They're not in yet. But my electrician is here and he's gonna turn the lights on in this house. And what has been darkness will now become light. Now this reminds me of my last week. Okay, so I told you guys I was a Roman soldier. Um, not in real life, but I was acting as a Roman soldier and we were marching Jesus down the street to be crucified. And in this scene, Barabbas comes out and um, Barabbas is crying after him. And the problem was we did this scene over and over and over again, right? Our part of it, it was a whole, as an hour long total, but our part was about eight and a half minutes. And so by the time Barabbas started his lines, I was kind of out of the scene, my character was. And so later on, I went back and looked at footage and I was like, oh, wow, that's really moving. Well, it just so happens that on Sunday morning, our pastor was talking about Barabbas. And there's a lot of interesting things about Barabbas. Um, number one, he was supposed to be crucified, but Jesus took his place, right? And they said he was probably there at the cross because that was supposed to be his cross, but also on either side of him were the thieves that Barabbas was associated with. So those were his friends. So most likely he was there watching his friends be crucified and knowing that center cross should have been my cross. And it was very moving because he felt the weight and the gravity of that. Also, while they were saying, do you want us to free Jesus or Barabbas? Barabbas was in a cell that was not that far away. It was far enough away that he could hear that they were screaming, but it wasn't close enough that they could hear what all they were saying. So Pilate said, who do you want me to free, Jesus or Barabbas? Or sorry, they said, what do you want me to do with him? And the crowd screamed, crucify him, crucify him. And then he said, do you want us to free Jesus or Barabbas? And they said, Barabbas, Barabbas. So from Barabbas' point of view, he was in a cell and he heard, crucify him, crucify him, Barabbas, Barabbas, and must have felt the despair of that to know like, 
my time is up, they're about to come take me out of this cell and they're gonna take me over there and they're gonna nail me to that cross. And I'm gonna die for my sins. But imagine how transformative that was when instead of them coming and taking him away to be crucified, they took him away and said, you're free to go. And that's what Jesus did for all of us, okay? Jesus for all of us paid the price and when we should be taken to our execution and to our eternal punishment, instead we're taken to freedom and heaven. That's a beautiful thing. The lights are about to be on in this house. Hopefully they are in your heart too. We're going to work. Okay there. So as the prophecy foretold, all the power is on. We got all the outlets and switches in and all the lights in and all the fans in. And we turn them on and test them and guess what? They all work. It's like magic but, you know, more like science. Now, a lot of times people want to reap rewards on things they have not done. It doesn't work like that, does it, Al? No, I mean, not unless you're stealing. And then, you know, people don't like that. Speaking well, of, and that has some rewards that it has come with it that are negative. Own type of rewards. <laughs> Once we end up in prison or shot, your choice. It's really not. It's, you know, you're rolling the dice every time. Like, am I gonna go to prison or am I gonna get shot? Prison. Shot, oh, and life's over, it's time for judgment. <coughs> or do you lose your truck? You can lose your truck. That happened uh, on a couple houses ago we were building and somebody tried to steal my temporary power pole, which was, I don't know, $1,500 or something like that. And they tied a rope to it and they took off with their truck, and their different truck, and their truck got stuck and they just abandoned it and they threw a gun off in the woods and. You know, they were like, we're out of here, but they had like a whole thief kit and everything. They had like, there's a Sawzall and bolt cutters and what else was in there? Uh, everything you needed to Toe straps and yeah, for yank and, and stuff. stuff. And so it, it backfired on him and I hope that he's... Well, the mistake was they left the key in it because the cop said if the key wasn't in it, he couldn't have had it towed. So they towed it away for him to a wonderful safe place where these can get their trucks back if they so desire to go get their stolen truck back. Anyway, we're gonna go get lunch and then we're gonna work on a couple other things that I'm playing a show tonight. So come out and see it, look back. Okay, so perhaps you're like, should I make a tile shower? Sure, you're smart, do whatever you want. So how do you do it? Well, first you put this mastic on there and some people call it magic, which I guess it kind of is, but it's just squishy stuff that dries hard. Um, and then you put spacers on and then this is how it works. You put the next one on, you're like, wow, oh, it's like magic. And this is called subway tile because, and a lot of people don't know this, I plan on having a subway come right through here. And you can get on it and take the train to Greenwich Village or I don't know where you're going, but wherever it is, you can take that in the subway. I think that's where they came up with the name of it because they have it in subways. Nevertheless, um, people ask me often, John, What's your favorite thing to do? You do a lot of different things. Well, that's true. Thank you for noticing. What's your favorite thing to do? I'm like, I don't know. This is what I love to do, okay? I love to create. I love to take something that's ugly, and if you guys remember, this house was ugly, and make it into something beautiful. Um, I love to take a person who's ugly in their heart and make them into something beautiful. They're outside, I'm like, makeup and filters takes care of that stuff, I don't know. I like to take nothing, an instrument, and be like, oh, I made this into something beautiful, right? A song or a picture or whatever in the world it might be. I love that. I love that process. And I think it's important to create in your life. And if you don't, then it turns into a lot of, oh, well, same stuff, different day. And I'm like, but is that right? Do you want to live your life like that? Or do you want to live your life with purpose? Do you want to look at it and go, I did that. That's amazing. And when you have to answer to God, don't you want to be proud of yourself? Don't you want to be like, I did literally everything I possibly could in my power to make the world a better place. Because that's what I want. I want that for myself and I want it for you too. I want you to look back and be like, I'm so glad I changed what I was doing and now I'm doing the right thing. It feels good inside. If you're wondering like, how can I be healthier, happier, richer, all the things, that's it. Help people. Help people and do it right. Okay, so here's another thing. I made a video on you know, TikTok reel, and if you're not on my TikTok, then shame on you. Just kidding. There's a lot of other things that aren't on my show. Um, and because I travel a lot, people ask me, what's your favorite place? And the answer is this. 
every place has a beauty of its own. Everything has a beauty of its own, and every person has a beauty of their own. And if you can look through God's eyes, if you will, at a person and go, I see God's image in you. I see how he would love you. In certain lighting, you're like, I don't like you. In traffic, you're not my favorite person. If you're on the phone and you're a telemarketer, I don't feel warm, fuzzy feelings towards you. But if you can remove yourself from that and stop villainizing other people and dehumanizing them and start thinking, this is a person that is a child of God. This is a person that needs love. This is a person that's probably got a lot of heartache that if you knew their whole story, it would break your heart. So be kind to that person, right? And when you look at a place and you look and you go, this is ugly, this isn't perfect, this isn't everything I want it to be. Okay, but what is good about it, okay? Because a lot of times you look at my pictures and videos, if you follow me at all, and you're like, that's beautiful, where is that? I'm like, my front yard. Okay, but your front yard looks ugly. I'm like, I know, I'm not good at it. But this flower is beautiful and I focus on the flower, right? I get right in there and I focus on the flower and you're like, that's gorgeous. And the rest of it in the background, I'm like, I know because I focus on the beautiful things in life and I find the beauty and I work on that. I encourage that, right? I'm an exhortationist. To exhort is to encourage somebody to be better and to do more. And you give them the courage that it takes to keep pressing on, to keep fighting the fight and, and finish the race strong. So I hope that that helps you guys. I know it's a long explanation and we'll keep laying this tile because we're hungry and we want to have lunch. All right. Okay there. So as the prophecy foretold, the tile's out. Now this is how we did it, okay? A lot of people are like, did you meticulously measure each one? And did you measure them all ahead of time? No, I'm not stupid. I called the factory, I was like, hey man, we got something these dimensions. And they pre-cut everything for me and they put the numbers on the back. I'm like, thank you. It's so much easier. It's like Ikea, shower Ikea. Now, if you believe that, I'm sorry, it's not true. We did cut all the pieces and you know, through life, Oftentimes you're like, I want to know what this piece is going to be. You're like, chill, bro. First, you got to do the low ones. You got to get there piece by piece, right? And you can't do the final step until you do the one before that and the one before that and the one before that. And a lot of times I'll put the last piece in and then I'm like, I should have done that one first. It would have got done a lot sooner. But that doesn't make sense because oftentimes I don't make sense. Now, we did subway tile, so we're about to go eat at... Subway, we're gonna eat fresh. Now, I don't know if you've ever had fresh, but um, it's food. So, yeah. Oh, hey there. So, when we were doing the other shower at the next house over, I was like, can we do the first piece last and save a lot of time? Ha! <laughs> you can! We do the first piece last, then we don't have to worry about the rest of it. It's already done. So, or the last piece first, I apologize, yeah. Anyway, now a lot of people don't understand about rock bottoms. And let me tell you what I mean by that, okay? I'm not talking about you sit on rocks with your bottom. What I'm talking about is everybody that has some kind of redemption story has some point in their life where they're like, I couldn't get any lower. Or I got low enough, I was like, I don't wanna go any lower. And the first step when that happens is, what? Like, the first step is, it is if you're dig if you're down in a hole and you're so acknowledgement that you have a problem. That's the first correct. step. Correct. Stop digging. If you're down in a hole, you stop digging. You don't go farther down in. Nope. And, oh, you stop and you go, you know what? I have let myself go. This you are is your as, own problem. Yeah, this is as far as I'm gonna go. I need to change. I am the problem. I can't blame somebody else anymore. And then they do, and then all of a sudden Phoenix rises from the ashes. And then you're like this. Hmm, that last person's way better than the first person. And what people do is they overcompensate for how bad they were. And then they're so much better than they would have been otherwise. We were talking about this earlier. Sometimes you see somebody and you're like, you're not that bad. And then 50 years later, you're like, you're still not that bad. But you meet somebody and you're like, you were horrible. And now you're amazing. Like, I know. And Jesus talked about this too. He said, he who is forgiven much loves much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. And so oftentimes the person that is the worst person becomes the best person. And this is part of the reason why when somebody comes to me and they're an atheist, they're like, I hate you and I hate your God and all this stuff. I'm like, okay. And I just love them because I'm like, you are so close. You don't understand. You're about to get saved. 
your life is about to turn around because if you think you're the first person to be in this bad place and then turn into something amazing, you're wrong. Your life is about to transform for the better, and I can't wait. All right. Oh, hey there. So, maybe you're thinking to yourself, so, how do you lay laminate? Sorry, I love your bottom line. Well, let me show you. It's really easy. You take this stuff and you put it in like this. Oh, that's easy. You can get close down here, right? So you got to get it in the groove, that's important, and then it locks in, all right? And then you put it down. Now this stuff's magical because you can hit it with a hammer. You can hit me with a hammer too, but after a while, I get grumpy. I don't think I'll take the hit, but after a while, I'm going to be like, please stop, that hurts. It doesn't tickle as much as you think. Now, speaking of getting hit with a hammer, maybe somebody's done you dirty at some point in your life and you're like oh i should hold a grudge you shouldn't okay now maybe you're like oh i let that go a long time ago i'm like mm, did you because a lot of times what happens is people are like i forgave them and i'm like but you bring it up all the time you punish them all the time you have a side i love like you ugh and you are not nice to them and they know there's beef between you. They know, mm -mm, that person's not forgiving me. They hate me. Things are different now. It's time to let that go. You know what you gotta do? You gotta like forgive enough that you can be friends again so that there's reconciliation. Now there's people I've forgiven that don't want reconciliation. I'm sorry, you're missing out, okay? I'm a good friend to have, but <laughs> you can be a good friend to have too. So look, there are people that are like, imagine that when you need to forgive somebody, it's like a debt, like, hey, I owe you a hundred dollars, okay? And this other person says, I forgive you. Now, what that means is you no longer owe them a hundred dollars, okay? But if you're like, hey, I owe you a hundred dollars, and they're always like, you know that hundred dollars you owe me. I mean, I forgave you, but I'm going without now. And like, shut up, stop talking, be nice. If you're gonna let it go, then let it go, okay? But then what ends up happening is they're like, well, can you give me 10 bucks? Cause you owe me a hundred. Can you give me five bucks? Can you give me seven bucks? And what I'm saying by that is that the snide remarks and the mean comments and the friction between you, if you imagine that that's money, then by the time you're finally like, you know what, years have passed and I'm gonna let that go. You're like, well, good. Cause you charged me $3,000 on a hundred bucks, spiritually speaking. So <clears throat> my point is this, forgive quickly. When you think I shouldn't forgive this, fast. I should make them suffer a little bit. I should punish them. Don't. When somebody says, I'm sorry, do this. I forgive you. And then move on with your life. It's a lot easier. You'll be happier. They'll be happier. God will be happier. And look, nobody talks about this, but if you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. If you want mercy, and I desperately need mercy, you have to be merciful. If you want friends, you have to be friendly. It's fact of life. Look it up. Mic drop. Yeah. Mm-hmm.